Okay, in this tutorial we are going to create a uh, concert, a promotional poster for the upcoming Little Tomato concert at the Rave. Um, and to do that we're actually going to pull in uh, several of the images or graphics that you've worked with from previous tutorials, um, including Little Tomato's brand where we applied that textile to it and also imported a font. Um, we're also going to bring in the picture of uh, isolated image of Little Tomato that we worked on in the last tutorial. Um, and also the uh, Rave logo that we isolated. Um, in addition to that, uh, I'm going to teach you two new skills in Photoshop. Uh, the first one is how to create a watermark, and then the second one is how to create a sort of a spotlight effect um, in, uh, in uh, Photoshop as well. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do is go to File, New. Uh, we're going to create our canvas here. And what I'd like to do is have a canvas that is, as you can see here, set to 11 inches by 17 inches, kind of a smaller poster size resolution since this will be printed. 300 dots per inch is great. Color mode is fine at RGB. Uh, the background can be transparent. That sounds good. If you've got all those settings, 11 by 17, go ahead and say OK. And then there is our movie poster in the or canvas in the workspace. All right, so I have a transparent background, and the first thing I'm actually going to do is um, I want to apply a style to this uh, background, um, and I think I want to put some color just behind that. So um, in order to do that, go to Layer, um, and let's create a new fill layer um, that's made of a solid color. Um, it will default, by the way, to my foreground color of white, so um, I can just go ahead and say do that, say OK. Um, so now I have this color fill layer of white, and what I want to do is actually apply a style to it. And the style I want to use is the same style that we used for um, Little Tomatoes brand, which is called brand, if you recall. So if I go to my styles menus right here, but if I go to my style menu and drag down to those um, days of steel or days of metal, I can't remember which days of steel, Styles, uh, I think this one's brand, is that right? Pass over that and just check. Yeah, that's brand, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and watch the magic happen. And now it just filled that entire layer with the, uh, with the brand style, which is great. Uh, the next thing I want to do is actually start placing some images here. So to do that, if you remember in Photoshop, you don't open image, you do file and you do place. So file, place, and what I want to bring in is some of the work that I've done um, in previous tutorials. The first thing I can bring in is the little tomato uh, logo. That'd be good. Tomato PNG. Place that. Um, and I think the size looks pretty good there. I want to uh, bring this up a little to the top. Yep, that looks really good. And then just a little trick with the arrow keys. You can nudge this a little bit to get it um, a little more centered. Well, it looks pretty good to me. I'm just kind of eyeballing this right now. You can also set guides and grids, by the way, in Photoshop, uh, just like we did with Illustrator um, to be more precise, but we don't need to be too precise for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and check mark and place Little Tomato uh, as brand. I can see it's kind of a little washed out in the red, so I'm also going to add a quick stroke, or excuse me, uh, drop shadow to that just to make it pop a little. Layer, layer style, and drop shadow. Yeah, that looks a little bit better already. I think um, that looks pretty good. So um, go ahead and say OK. And so now I've got a little tomato. Uh, brand laid down. Um, the next thing I think I'll do is actually bring in a little tomato, his image. So I'm going to place, uh, place the ping version of a little tomato that we isolated. There that is. It's a little big. I can tell it's already a little too big for the... Um, for the poster. So to do that, um, if I just start, if I grab a corner here and I just start moving it around, it's going to um, distort the image, which is going to make them look either really skinny or really fat or just kind of mess with um, the proportions. So if you hold down the shift key when you do that, it'll scale proportionally. So now I can kind of move up and down and kind of eyeball what I think is about right. Um, I'm going to go right about there in terms of size. If you're Curious about that? It looks like I reduced it uh, according to the um, according to the width and height by 47%. Um, if I want to maintain the aspect ratio, I can 
link these two together and I could actually just make this like 50% say. And now you can see it's exactly 50% scaled down on both sides. It's just another way to do it. Um, and I'll bring a little tomato kind of up to right about there. I think I want him sort of his feet almost resting on the black part of this. Uh, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'm more on the red part. And then I can just nudge it around a little bit, but I like that. I think that's pretty decent. All right, and then go ahead and commit that place. Great. All right, so um, now what I'd like to do is um, create some text. Uh, I want to, uh, he is promoting his new album, uh, Ripe and Juicy. So I'm going to go ahead and load the T for text tool. And the font that I want, I want to be consistent with the Little Tomato brand, which is Anton. You can see it's already defaulted here. If yours is not, you can just highlight it and say Anton. And then um, in terms of a size, I'm not sure what the right size is going to be. I'm just going to put this down here for now. Um, and I'm going to type in ripe and juicy. He spells juicy, J-U-C-E, J-U-I-C-E, excuse me. Um, and then move this over. And it's not big enough yet. We want to make this a little bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of scale that up a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure what the right number of points is, but why don't we go ahead and make this uh, 125 points. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So uh, ripe and juicy, 125 points. I'll just nudge this around a little bit so it looks fairly centered. Very good. Um, and then let's go ahead and apply a style to that. Um, the style that I'm going to go for, I could stay consistent with a little tomato, but let's just mix it up a little bit. Um, we're going to still use one of these Days of Steel um, styles. We're going to go for this one that's called Night Bottom. Uh, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> that's fine with me. So that looks good for a uh, ripe and juicy Little Tomatoes uh, album that he just recently dropped. Um, and then we want to put the date of the concert in here. So we'll go back to the T for Text tool. And that's going to be on May 23rd. Um, I want to scale this down a little bit. I don't think it should be quite as big as the, the ripe and juicy, so we'll kind of make this uh, maybe 95 points. Sure, looks good. Go ahead and center this right about there. And we can nudge it around with arrow keys again. Very good. All right. Um, and we'll want to apply style to this. And let's see, maybe we could go back to the brand style, see how that goes. Um, yeah, that looks okay. It kind of gets lost a little bit in poster, I think. So maybe I'll just go ahead and put a little extra drop shadow on that and see how that goes. Um, turn up the drop shadow a little bit. Can I do that? Um, let's see. Let's make the drop shadow black. Say okay. And let's um, turn the distance up a little bit to uh, I'm kind of guessing maybe 15 size looks good the angle maybe we'll make it sort of like this over here and it just pops it out a little bit more that's fine so just kind of adjusting it to your eye to give it a little more emphasis so we can see what's going on the date is obviously an important thing with the promotional poster great all right so a uh, little tomato ripe and juicy may 23rd uh, i have a couple more images to place the first one we're going to place is the where the concert's going to be which is at the rave so the rave Eagle, eagles club isolated or no background. You should have made that in the last tutorial. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scale this down a little bit. Um, I can go ahead and link this up here. I'll do it this way just for fun. Linked. Um, so it does. So it, remember it's the link that maintains the aspect ratio, maybe 75%. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I'll go ahead and place it. And then I'll put this over here in the corner and I'll kind of nudge that around a little bit that looks good except again it's sort of getting lost a little bit in that red so um, you know one of my favorite effects is the drop shadow it usually makes it kind of pop off uh, the screen a little bit so I'm going to stick with that sometimes it's just the simple things so I'm going to go ahead and do that and you can see it already popped off uh, pretty good it looks pretty good ice I'll go ahead and say okay to that all right and then I also want to add a watermark so a watermark is sort of a washed out or sometimes almost like a glass or transparent um, looking effect. Um, it is pretty common in posters, etc. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a watermark um, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now and then we'll bring it in.
All right, I'm going to show you just uh, quickly how to create a simple uh, watermark. Uh, we're going to do a, a watermark style for our um, little tomato poster, and I just wanted to show you how to do that quickly. So uh, the first thing I'd like to do is bring up, we're going to do it with the Rave uh, logo. So if you open the Rave logo that, logo that you isolated um, in a previous tutorial, um, the Rave Eagles Club, logo and there it is it's uh it's on a transparent background that's what i meant by um, having isolated it for this particular logo um, we don't need the eagles club we're just looking for the rave part which is in red right now so i'm gonna actually just quickly crop out the eagles club to do that i'm going to go to the tool menu and choose crop which is right here and that gives me these bars to sort of drag there's different ways to do this by the way this is just kind of a pretty quick quick way to go um, so i'm just going to go ahead and isolate just the rave logo And once I've got that uh, in there, the Eagles Club is is out. I can just go check to commit that crop, and you can see now my workspace is reduced to just where it says the rave. That's perfect. Um, and now I'm just going to apply a couple of uh, layer effects to to the rave logo to turn it into sort of a crystal, almost glass or glass um, wa style watermark. Um, and it's just two uh, simple effects. You have to do them in kind of a specific order. Um, the first is if I go to layers, layer styles, we've used these before, I'm going to add a stroke. So I select stroke and the stroke dialog comes up. That's good. If you're doing a watermark, um, just make a one point stroke. Um, and then I think all of the other settings look good. There's nothing else to change there. So, so go ahead and say OK. Um, and now you can see I have a black one point stroke around the rave. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is actually take the fill opacity. Remember, opacity is the ability to see through um, something. So if I make something 100% opaque, you can't see through it. If it's zero, it'd be completely clear. Um, if you look on the uh, selections for layers here, there is opacity. That's for um, everything within the document or within within the, uh, the canvas. Um, there's also fill opacity which is right below it and that's actually what we want we want to remove the red and the white so to do that um, just go to the slide bar and turn the fill opacity to zero and you can see as I did that um, the red and white faded out and became more transparent to the point that it had completely disappeared and that's exactly what we want so one point stroke and a zero fill a zero opacity fill um, and then this is exactly what we're looking for. So now we're going to go back to effects. Um, you can do that by clicking on effects, by the way, over in the layers. Or you could go on to layer, layer effects like we normally do. Um, and the next thing I want to do is actually add a drop shadow. So the drop shadow, go ahead and select that. Um, we're going to need to change the settings a little bit in terms of the size. This mine is defaulted to a pretty big spread or a distance. Um, so what I'd like to do is change this, the distance to two and the size to two. So it's just a very small uh, drop shadow. Everything else is just fine in terms of the setting. So you can go ahead and say, okay. Um, it's pretty small, you can't really see it, um, but uh, the drop shadow is now on there. And all I have to do after that to turn this into a um, kind of a glass effect um, of the rave is to turn the stroke off. So go ahead and take the minus the I, turn the stroke off. You can barely see it here in the recording um, on the screen, but watch what happens when I do a put a fill layer behind it. Um, now, if I drag this down, look at that. You can see the rave coming through. That's going to pop and be uh, make sort of an, uh, a watermark um, on the little tomato uh, poster um, as soon as I create that. So what I want to do is I don't need the white background. I don't want it. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go to File, Save for Web, make this a PNG. Uh, 24 file, which is probably what it's uh, defaulting to. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this uh, Rave Clear PNG. And okay, now that we've gone and created the watermark, uh, we're going to go ahead and place it. So let's go ahead to File Place and look for that Rave Clear PNG. There it is. Looks great. So let's go ahead and scale that up a little bit. I'll just hold down the Shift key this time. Can barely see it, but once we place it, I think it's going to pop 
just fine. Go ahead and place. And there it is. You can just kind of barely see it in there, which is sort of the point. Um, if you want it to pop a little more, you can do that by just adding a little more drop shadow to it. Um, but there it is, the rave, right over uh, Little Tomato, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, and then that is a, that's a wa watermark right there. So there's Little Tomato at the rave, ripe and juicy, uh, May 23rd. And that's a pretty nice looking promotional poster. The last effect or thing that I want to do is um, I'm going to take this and create a spotlight effect, like a spotlight um, at the concert that's going to be coming down in this direction on Little Tomato. I think that should look pretty nice. Um, so let's uh, let's do that now. All right, so we're going to put a kind of a spotlight uh, coming from this direction, from uh, the upper right-hand corner down on uh, Little Tomato, almost like he's on stage. This is, you know, obviously a pretty abstract poster. It's not like he's actually on a stage and there's real lighting sources and real spotlights on him. Um, so this is kind of a, just the beginning of a, that technique. Uh, there's a lot more you can do to it, that's all I'm saying, and we'll probably get into that later, or we might get into that later in additional tutorials. Um, but for now, we're just going to show you, I'm just going to show you how to uh, create that sort of spotlight effect. So um, to do that, first thing I'm going to do is just zoom just going to zoom down a little bit, Command minus, um, so I can see what I'm working with here. And um, I am going to end up creating a layer mask and then applying a curve adjustment, which a curve, curve, there's several different adjustments so you'll learn about them. A curve helps you actually sort of bend the curve of these sort of standard light and um, color channels of RGB that you see here and uh, move them around. So. Uh, to do that, first thing I want to do is I want to select my polygonal lasso tool. Now, your, uh, your might be defaulted to the regular lasso tool. Just click and hold for a second. The polygon allows you to kind of make unusual shapes um, when you're trying to isolate something. So the idea is if you had a spotlight up in this corner, the light would spread in almost, I guess, sort of a triangular fashion. Um, and you want to do this. You're going to be do, We're going to be creating layer masks in portions and so we're going to do it probably about three times and the reason that is if you think about a spotlight uh, the light diffuses and it becomes less intense the further it gets out of the outside of the cone if you will I guess we'll call it a cone um, so and we want to recreate that so we're going to do this in a few um, few passes we'll start with the largest pass so I'm going to kind of go outside the canvas quite a way I'm going to click with my lasso tool uh, maybe I'm kind of guessing here but maybe about there and I'm going to click and drag. I want to try to cover pretty much most of Little Tomato here. So, yep, that looks about right. I got everything but his hand and the spotlight. I click once, and now I kind of come down here, cover his feet, click there, and then I can click up here and close the loop. Now I've got the marching ants, and you can see this sort of triangle cone, and it's covering, um, covering most of him, which is great. Um, so I can go ahead and uh, create my adjustment layer. Now the adjustment layer that I'm going to do to get to that, um, at the bottom of, uh, of the uh, dialog for layers here, you can see create new fill or adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and do that. It's the um, circle the half that's half filled. Click on that once and it's, here's all these different types of adjustments you can do. We'll get into some of these later. Uh, the one that I want to mess with is the light source a little bit and the curves. So um, this is kind of the standard as you see it right here, this uh, graph that comes up. And I can bend this. And when I bend it up or down, it's going to make the light more or less intense. So I'm going to grab it from the middle and bend it up. And you see what's happening there? It gets, it can get really crazy. Um, that would be obviously way too much. But um, you kind of want to just get something that, you know, this is the farthest part of the cone. So it's going to be the le least intense in terms of light, um, and you can adjust this at any time. So just right now, just kind of pick something that you think looks okay. I'm going to kind of go right about there. That's fine. Um, and then the other thing that uh, light does is it diffuses, if you will. So it's not you, see, you can see these lines of light. That's not natural at all. So um, in order to do that, we have to blur it. Um, so I'm going to go to filters. And I am going to choose a blur, and I'm going to choose a Gaussian blur, and that's going to kind of blend out these light sources. Um, the 
it defaulted to 75, a radius of 75. You can see it already looks really good. Kind of the, the way you want to look at this is um, it's more blurred or less intense and more blurred as it goes to the outer edges and a little bit more intense as, as it comes to the inside of the spotlight. So 75, if I turn this up to 100, we can just kind of see what happens to it. I'm not sure um, that, you know, it might be a little bit too washed out. I'm going to stick with 75, and I just want to keep that number in mind because um, as I uh, do a couple more layers here, I'm going to want to keep turning it down gradually um, so it becomes more and more intense as it gets the spotlight gets more towards the center of the cone. So I'm just going to go ahead and say OK to that. That looks great. Very good. There's our first layer now. So here's our layer mask. You can see that the um, the layer mask was applied in that triangle that we created from the polygon tool. Uh, the next step we want to do is we want to take our polygon tool and we're going to make a second triangle and it's going to be um, inside of the first one. So I'm going to click here and maybe I'll make something sort of like there-ish to here and to here. So it's inside of the previous source. All right, got to get my marching ants. I've got those now, and I can do this. Repeat the process, right? So I can go ahead and say curve. Let's curve, and then maybe we're going to make this one a little more intense because it's getting closer in. But we don't want to wash them out, right? So we kind of got to draw that line there, um, and you can see the line here of the uh, the cone or the shape. So we want to go ahead and blur that out again uh, by applying that filter. Blur, Gaussian blur, and this one we're going to make a little bit tighter. I will try maybe 50. Yeah, I think that actually spread it out pretty good. Maybe yeah, let's just see if we turn it down a little less. Yeah, I think that that looks fine. So go ahead and say okay. Um, and then if if you felt it needed it, you could do still another layer. Um, I think this is actually just fine. It gives sort of that spotlight effect. I'm fine with that. Um, with two. Um, but anyway, that's how you would create a spotlight. So now if I zoom up a little bit, you can see this sort of subtle but clear spotlight effect going on around around little, little tomato. Um, so that's great. Now we can mess with just a little bit um, some of the layers. So for instance, um, if we want bring the rave above the spotlight and then also the all the text I think maybe we'll bring above the spotlight let's make sure that that yeah I like that kind of popping out a little bit better there um, May 23rd we'll go ahead and drag that layer above the spotlight perfect and then the last one we want to get in there is little tomato image that above the spotlight as well. Great. So now we've got the spotlight behind that text and kind of shining on a little tomato. Um, and there it is. There's the uh, promotional poster. Um, and it has a watermark applied. Um, we've applied to various styles. Uh, you learned about how to uh, do sort of a spotlight effect. Um, and it's looking pretty good. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.